Hi there, John Vorhaus here, author of this book here, The Comic Toolbox, How to Be Funny Even If You're Not. You know, I wrote this book 25 years ago, and from that day to this, it's never occurred to me to read it out loud on video. But today that thought crossed my mind, and so I thought I'd start by reading the introduction, and I'll post it online. If you enjoy listening to it, and I enjoy reading it, then who knows, maybe I'll go ahead and read the whole book, chapter by chapter. But let's start with the introduction, shall we? Introduction to the Comic Toolbox. There's a book by William Strunk and E.B. White called The Elements of Style. When we read it in high school, my friends and I all called it The Elephants of Style, and you can be sure that we thought this was pretty much the height of hilarity. Well, we also thought that drinking a great deal of Boone's Farm apple wine and throwing up on your neighbor's lawn was a good idea, so draw your own conclusions. At any rate, The Elements of Style was a seminal book. It packed a ton of useful information about language and writing, and even in its own offhand way about life into a very small number of pages. For a grammar text, it was and remains a remarkably good read. I recommend it. Strunk and White were big on rules and not at all afraid to take a stand. They hated the passive voice, for instance, and insisted that the use of the passive voice led to weak writing. Because I was young and impressionable when I read their book, I made this rule my own. For most of my writing life, I religiously purged the passive voice from my work. And then one day I discovered how much fun it was to write in the passive voice. I knew it was wrong. Bill and E.B. had told me it was wrong. But I couldn't help myself. The words just came spinning out onto the page. The room was walked into by a man by whom strong, handsome features were held. A woman was met by him. The bed was lain upon by her. Then the bed was lain upon by him. Clothing was removed from them both. Sex was had. Climax was achieved. Afterwards, cigarettes were smoked by them. Suddenly, the door was opened by the husband of the woman by whom the bed was lain upon. A gun was held by him. Some screams were screamed and angry words exchanged. Jealousy was felt by the man by whom the gun was held. Firing of the gun was done by him. The flying of bullets took place. Impact was felt by bodies. The floor was hit by bodies. Remorse was then felt by the man by whom the gun was held. The gun was turned upon himself. So slavish had I been to my devotion to the so-called rules of good writing that I had missed out on a piece of real linguistic merriment, a joke if nothing else. In blind obeisance to the rules, I had forgotten to have fun. And geez, if you can't have fun in writing, or painting, or drawing, or acting, or twisting balloon animals, or indeed any creative effort, why do it? So I want to make one thing clear going in. The first rule is that there are no rules. Take all this stuff with a grain of salt. My tools are my tools. Designed for my convenience. If you find them useful, by all means use them. But they're not gospel for God's sake, not even elements of style. On the other hand, I believe very strongly that the rules don't confine, they define. Creativity is problem solving. The more useful rules we have, and the more rigorously we apply them, the more clearly we understand the problem we're trying to solve, and the more success we'll have at solving it. For instance, if your car has a dead battery, it's a rule that you connect the jumper cables plus to plus and minus to ground. If you connect the plus terminal of one battery to the minus terminal of the other, you'll end up with a fried battery and very possibly a fried face. So, as you poke around in this thing called a comic toolbox, adopt the useful fiction that everything in it is at least worthy of inspection. If you test these tools and find them user unfriendly, by all means reject them. In doing so, you'll likely come up with some new ones of your own. They'll be better for you because they'll be yours, conceived by you in an idiom that you understand. But do try out all the tools, and especially try the exercises. Some may seem difficult or irrelevant to your work, or just plain stupid. Try them anyhow, if only to prove how just plain stupid they really are. As I will take pains to make clear later on, you won't be graded in your work, nor judged in any sense, not even by you. But you will get much more out of this material if you put it into play while it's fresh in your mind. Scrawl in the margins if you like, or write down your answers in a self-deleting computer file if that will help you minimize your emotional risk but do try the exercises. You'll only get out of this book what you put into it. Or to put it another way, the more you play, the more it's worth. 
Several years ago, I taught a class called Writing from the Alien Perspective. As homework for that class, I assigned the following. Go out and do something you've never, ever done before. Some people paid for strangers' meals. Some stole library books. Some played dumb. Some refused to do the assignment, which is something they'd never done before in any class anywhere, or so they claimed. Some got arrested. It was that kind of exercise. And we discovered something very interesting. The mere act of doing the unexpected thing created one funny moment after another. This revelation led to a new class called the Comic Toolbox, and that class led to this book. So as you read the book, stop frequently to ask yourself how you can make your own creative experience fresh and new. I'm not talking about what you write or draw or paint, but about the system by which you bring your material to life. Break old habits, even ones that work. Write in bed. Paint in the park. Draw cartoons on walls. Take yourself by surprise. The more you do this, the funnier you'll be. And if nothing else, you'll have the experience of doing something new, and the new thing is almost always worth doing, if for nothing but the newness alone. A blanket disclaimer before we push on. In this book, I talk a lot about the hero, and the character, and the writer, and the reader, and the viewer. A lot of times I call these people he, though of course I mean both he and she. Language lags behind social change, and in the English language, we still lack an easy convention for gender-neutral third-person pronouns. Maybe Strunk and White could sort it out, but I've just had to muddle through. Thanks for bearing with me. Eastern philosophy describes creativity as carrying buckets to the river. The river is always there, but sometimes the buckets don't do their job. As much as anything else, this is a book about building better buckets. Some of them work well for me. I hope they'll work well for you, too.